In this series of videos, we're covering an app that makes the game Brick Breaker. And in this video specifically, we're going to cover the user interface for the game screen. Right, so we've went and set up some things that we've already seen. Right, so labels. So first we dragged a canvas on top and then we used a horizontal arrangement to place four labels. Right, so our instructions label is simply going to start off by saying tap to launch the ball. Right, and it should take up 50% of the width. Right, so that way it can be offset in the center and set itself out from the other labels. We also have a spacer label which we've used before to just separate some of the labels out and we will set it to 1% width. Okay, and then we have a score label. That's just our label for saying, here's your current score. And we want it right aligned so it's as close to the score as possible. And we made it bold. And then lastly, we will have a left aligned actual number for the score, which will start off as zero, and we will have it fill the parent. Right? So we see it expand all the way across the width. And so this is the basic layout that we see for the horizontal arrangement with several labels. Now we have this canvas, and what we're going to use in Brick Breaker are two things. We're going to use a user's bar or a paddle of some sort to bounce a ball against bricks, right? But first we have to think about the bar and the ball and all of that that's involved. So we'll worry about the bricks later. Okay, so we're gonna add a few things to our canvas. So under drawing and animation, we see that we have image sprites and balls. So if we add an image sprite, it becomes anything we want on that canvas, right? So we set a picture and we can move it around or we can interact with it, right? So it has all of these properties. So in this case, our image sprite is going to be the paddle or the bar that the user interacts with to get the ball to bounce towards the bricks, okay? So we're gonna name that player bar sprite. And we've uploaded a simple image, it's just a gray rectangle, to our media files so that we can set the picture of our bar sprite. All right, when we see it comes up, and it's, like I said, a simple gray rectangle. We don't want our sprite to rotate, right? So rotate means if you change the heading, it'll kind of change the direction it's facing as well. Right, so our bar is only gonna move left and right with our fingers, so we can just disable that. And these are good settings for now for X and Y. We'll actually set them when the screen initializes. Right, and then this interval is something used for moving the sprite around, but we won't be using the interval, so make sure the speed is set to zero, because every time this interval goes off, just like a clock, it moves the sprite if the speed is more than zero, right? So it'll move it a certain amount of pixels every interval. All right, and we can leave the height and the width automatic and make sure it's enabled. So that's our basic sprite, and then we have a ball, right? So our basic ball is something we can just drag onto the canvas and we end up with a ball and again, it has all of these properties that allow animation and movement. And we want our ball to be slightly smaller in size. So we'll set the radius to two. And we have to make it visible. Its location is fine for now. And we want to make sure it's black, right? We might change its color later on in our blocks, but it's fine for now. And we want our ball to move quite often, actually. So we're going to set it to 10 as our interval and our speed 
to 5 pixels. So our speed, our ball will move 5 every 10 milliseconds. So that's 100 times per second. So it'll actually move 500 pixels per second. So we can continue playing around with these values later on, but for now we'll leave these here. Okay, so we have our ball set up, our sprite set up on our canvas, and that's the main parts of our basic implementation of Brick Breaker. Right? We don't have any bricks right now, but first we need to deal with the ball bouncing and the paddle or the user interface. Right? So this is how the user will interact with our game to start with. 